Hey guys, welcome to Ryan's Range Report. Today we're going to cover first focal plane scopes for tactical practical shooting and really for any kind of shooting. What is first focal plane? Reticle placement within the erector tube determines if the rifle scope is either first or second focal plane. The erector assembly is a critical assembly within the rifle scope and is responsible for magnifying or demagnifying the image. A reticle in the first focal plane is placed at the front of the erector assembly and remains in the same visual proportion to the target across the rifle scope's entire magnification range. While the proportions of the reticle will appear to change, such as in the video that you're seeing now, when adjusting the magnification, in reality, the reticle's values are remaining in proportion to the target. This is beneficial for rapid ranging and holdovers at various distances. Paired to a second focal plane scope, where the reticle subtensions are set at a predetermined magnification and change as the magnification changes. The subtensions on your reticle should match your turrets. If you look at the turrets on my Bushnell ERS, you'll see that they're numbered 1 through 10. For every revolution on the turret, I'm adjusting the scope 10 mils and 1 tenth mil increments. In the past and today, it's very common to see a mil dot reticle with quarter MOA per click turrets. A lot of people equate this with quarter inch at 100 yards. While this holds true, you should try and remove it from your train of thought. With turrets that match your reticle and first focal plane, you can zero at any range at any magnification quickly and effectively. I see more shooters waste ammo trying to get that initial 50 yard zero because of the confusion with the turret system they have. This is due to the quarter inch at 100 yards line of thought, which of course would double at 50 yards. While it seems like something that's easy to remember, it's one of the biggest mistakes I see people make while sighting in a rifle. So let's take a look at how easy it is to zero with matching turrets and then we'll look at the advantages of first focal plane. After bore sighting, shoot three shots at the center of the target. With first focal plane, this can be at any distance or magnification. I've simulated three shots that are six mils low. With that reading, we'll adjust our turrets up six mils. Now take three more shots and you should be dead nuts on your target. Now, we're going to take a look at using first focal plane in the field with targets at varying distances. On this stage, we have targets at 100, 200, 800, and 1100 yards. For me, if I'm shooting 100 and 200 yard generous sized targets that I don't have to search for, I'm probably going to hold the same wind and elevation. Often, targets are spread out wide across the field, so I'll start with my magnification held pretty far back. Now at 800 yards, the wind is blowing, so I've dialed my elevation, and with my turrets, I'm holding 2.5 mils for wind. I'm using first focal plane, so at 12 power, my values hold true. Now, we've reached the last target, and I've increased my magnification to 21 power for this last shot. Just like before, all of my values in my reticle hold true, so with no extra math or calculations, I can dial my elevation and hold my wind for impact. Also, with first focal plane, if you need to estimate the range of your target, you can do it at any magnification. Well, I really hope that that answers some of the questions about first focal plane and how useful it is on your rifle. Here are a few first focal plane scopes that I've used and recommend. Make sure and call vendors to try and get the best price. Thanks for watching.